Christos Anesti. Uh, Your Eminence, would you please deliver the invocation? Kiriu de Ithomen, Kiria Leiso. O Heavenly Father, the source of wisdom and light, who distributes gifts of spiritual knowledge and discernment upon all those seeking to do your will. Bless now these graduates of Hellenic College and Holy Cross as they commence new ministries in your Holy Church. Fill them with wisdom and discernment that they may serve your people with love, compassion, and humility, radiating your light and preserving your truth. As they spread throughout our sacred archdiocese like the seeds of the sour, make them all fall among good soil so that your word, which has been cultivated in their hearts, can grow a hundredfold and be offered for the benefit of the faithful. Let them embrace the future with courageous spirits, with open hearts, and with intellectual tenacity so that through their ministry, others may be inspired to noble endeavors. Preserve them, their professors, the staff of the Hellenic College and Holy Cross, their families, and all who have contributed to the godly function of our beloved Scully. Cover them under the shelter of your wings and guide their steps so that they may always do that which is pleasing to you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit now and forever and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Let us chant Christos Anesti. Christos Anesti. Next video, please.
Your Eminences, Your Graces, Reverend Fathers, dear faculty, administration, graduates, families, friends. God has a plan. That's what we're told. That's what we learn. But we also know that God also gave us free will. There's a, there's a tension between those statements. As you leave this institution, you have been blessed with the opportunity to have broadened and deepened your faith and your knowledge. Congratulations on your accomplishments. On taking advantage of the scholars. Reap knowledge from their knowledge. On the friendships that you've made, many of which will last a lifetime. The support that you will gain from them. Classmates who you will be able to rely on and who can rely on you. With whom now and in the future you will share memories of not only your experiences here, but the stresses of your experiences to come. On your faith, which has not only deepened and broadened, but has now been more advised, it's more nuanced with discernment. Where will you go? What will you do? God has a plan, but you have the free will to make your own choices. You have a responsibility to do that due to the free will that God has granted you. And those choices will present themselves before a plan of God may become clear to you. And we all struggle with that, with the doubt, with the fear to err, but if your faith is at the core of your decisions, you will learn, you will grow, and you will succeed. But when those choices present themselves like Frost's fork in the road, think, ponder, pray, not only of that immediate choice, but of the consequences of the choices that you make. And you may not understand your path that's God's plan until only at the time as you look back at it. If you're blessed to see in advance, you're doubly blessed. Further education, family, career, the priesthood, other volunteer church uh, involvement. These are amongst your choices. Don't fear them. Make them. But as you progress, keep yourself open to options, to opportunities, to possibly drastic changes in the plan that call you. Fear them not. Your choices will be challenged and your faith will be challenged. But don't face those challenges with fear because Christ is risen. And as long as that faith stays at your core, God's plan will become clear to you. Follow it with passion. Follow it with commitment. Because life is a process whose goals will likely shift over time. And if you are blessed, it's the process you will primarily remember. That will form you. And let that process be directed by your faith. And then God's plan will become clear to you. Thank you. Now I would like to introduce to the podium Father John Magulius, Vice Chair of the Board of Trustees, uh, and uh, uh, a friend and a mentor for the entire time that I've been here, for which he has my thanks. Father John. Christ is risen. Amen. Your Eminence, Archbishop Elpido Foros of America, Chairman of the Board of Trustees of Hellenic College and Holy Cross, Your Eminences, Your Graces, my brother priests, 
beloved presbyteres, faculty, staff, students of Hellenic College Holy Cross, distinguished honorees, parents, grandparents, families who have gathered on this 81st commencement of our beloved Squali. During this holy and glorious season of the resurrection, it is an honor and privilege to represent the Board of Trustees and to extend to our graduates first, to all of our students, to their families, most importantly to their families, the love and appreciation we have for you and to offer our congratulations on this occasion in life. The graduates will begin a new chapter. They will take with them the experiences they have had and they will apply that to the faith that has been strengthened here on the Holy Hill. That faith will give them the opportunity to influence others, to bring them to Christ, that we may all live and that we may all bring forth that light of the resurrection, which promises life to us. This is the message of our Lord that he has come to give us abundant life. And we are so grateful for the work being done at our beloved school, thanking Mr. George Cantonis as president, <laughs> the administrative staff, the faculty, Everyone who brings this family together, because even though the students have left their homes, they have come to be a part of the greater home, which is the church, and which is expressed here at this beloved campus, which is a beacon of our faith. On behalf of the Board of Trustees, know that you will always have our prayers know that we will continue to love you as you serve the people of God in the choices you will make in life. Listen to the words of St. Paul who has taught us to proclaim the gospel and who has taught us to strengthen the church because she needs to be strengthened in today's world. God bless you. May he grant you all many years. Once again, you have our prayers and love. Oxie to all of you. May you all be worthy. And allow me just in closing and thanking the families who have supported their children, the students, whom are, who are so much a part of our beloved school always. God bless you. Scheduled to speak was uh, the Honorable Simeon Tagos, the Consul General of the Hellenic Republic of, of, of Greece for Boston. Uh, as you are probably aware, today is election day. And so from uh, 5 o'clock in the morning until 9 o'clock at night, uh, poor Consul General is going to be overseeing voting at the consulate office. He sends both his regrets and his congratulations to you all. I would now uh, like to introduce Jeannie Wranglis speaking on behalf of the uh, president of the National Philanthropic Society, Arlene Ciavellis Keel. Ms. Wranglis, please. Thank you, George. Christos Anesti. Your Eminence, Archbishop. Alpita Foros, your eminences, your graces, President Cantonis, esteemed Hellenic College Holy Cross Board of Trustees, Reverend Clergy, beautiful presbyteras, respected faculty, honorary degree recipients, Dr. Pazavos and Charles and Connie Kutris, and Honyo Pala to them for tomorrow. <laughs> Parents and, and the family of the seminarians and students, 
graduates of the class 2023, ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor and privilege to bring greetings on behalf of the National Philoptos President Arlene Savalas Keel and the entire army of over 25,000 Philoptos sisters and brothers from throughout the Archdiocese. We offer our sincere congratulations to each of you as you celebrate the many achievements which you have brought to this remarkable day today. The opportunities which await you are many, but the road will not always be easy. As your journey through life, always pray for the Lord to light your path, and he will direct each and every step you take that all of your efforts will bring him glory and honor. Hellenic College, Holy Cross is just not a school. We are a family. You've been part of this campus community that has nurtured you, brought you spiritual and educational enrichment. Some of you met your future spouses here, had children, and have shared the joys and the sorrows of life. The environment here is safe, loving, and encouraging. And now you embark into the world Hold fast on your memories for your time here on the Holy Hill. And always remember that the cross, which shines brightly over the dome of this chapel, for the cross will always be your strength to sustain you in all your work and guide you on this beautiful journey. Whether you become a priest, a presbyteta, a pastoral assistant, a youth director, or ministry leader, Hellenic College Holy Cross has given you the tools to succeed. Now it's up to you to cult cultivate your knowledge and apply it for the good of the church and nurture yourselves for the future of orthodoxy in America. National Philoptos is so proud to be a partner with Hellenic College Holy Cross and it is a great joy to have the graduating students recently visited the National Philoptos Op office in New York this year. And we want to, you to know that as many of you embark on this parish ministry, Philoptos is there always to help you bring the gospel to life by being an extra pair of hands to spread the love of Christ to those in need. So through our name means friends of the poor. We are so much more. We are philanthropy, fellowship, and faith in action. In the 2 Corinthians 9, 8, we read these words of St. Paul, and God is able to make all grace abound towards you, that you always have enough sufficiency in all things and may have the abundance for every good work. And now you turn the page to begin an exciting new chapter in your lives. And always remember that Philoptos will be eager and willing partner in your ministry. We stand ready to support you and to help you fulfill your God-pleasing work. You have been given many tools to help you in your studies, but there are three special words we would like to leave you with today. Faith, hope, love. Stay strong in your faith. Never lose hope. Do everything in love. Congratulations, class of 2023. May the risen Lord bless you all. Thank you. It is now my pleasure to introduce the chairman of Leadership 100, Demetrius Logothetis. Archbishop Elpidophoros, Metropolitan Methodius of Boston, respected hierarchs, esteemed President George Cantonis, distinguished faculty, graduates, families, and friends, Christos Anesti. I am honored once again to be part of the baccalaureate and graduate school commencement ceremonies, this time honoring the class of 2023. As chairman of Leadership 100, 
I wish to express my pride and gratitude to be part of this auspicious commencement honoring our esteemed members, Chairman Emeritus Charles and Connie Costadinos and Costadina Cotros. Together with Dr. Luis Patavas, Distinguished Professor of Canon Law Emeritus at Holy Cross. You state that Holy, the Hellenic College Holy Cross is presenting a joint honorary degree to two people, Charles and Connie, who have been partners in life for more than 60 years and partners in philanthropy for almost as long. Leadership 100 has benefited immensely from that partnership when Charles served as chairman during a critical period in our history that included the economic downturn of 2008. As a leading business executive and exemplary churchman, Charles, with the support of Connie, guided us through that period with his own generosity and ability to motivate members which led to the success and financial stability. He and Connie, our first lady then, presided graciously at all our events and conferences. Today, they both continue to be involved in Leadership 100, continuing to add their presence, while Charles serves on our executive committee, adding his wisdom and guidance to our proceedings. Hellenic College Holy Cross will always, was always their preeminent concern, and their devotion inspired the support of many of our members. They richly deserve our gratitude and today's honor. Leadership 100 has always made support of the school our priority and is pleased with its significant progress in achieving stability in finances, enrollment, and accreditation under the leadership of President George Cantones and guided by His Eminence Archbishop Elpidophoros. To date, we have contributed $26 million to the scholarship program for the seminarians with our ongoing commitment, and that commitment will continue into a promising future. Hellenic College Holy Cross represents for us the foundation of our faith and heritage, providing guidance to our lives and the lives of our families through the training of our clergy. It is also the bedrock of our Hellenic heritage and learning, providing the scholarship that informs our traditions and values and safekeeping and perpetuating our rich Greek language. The spiritual formation and preparation of all the impressive graduates assembled here today is not only a personal but a vital contribution to our parishes our church, our nation, and the world. To you, our beloved graduates of Hellenic College and Holy Cross, I extend our heartfelt congratulations of our board and all the members of Leadership 100. We pray that our risen Lord will guide you as you begin your worthy ministry to serve him and his church. Thank you. Introduce Dr. Timothy Petitsis, the interim dean of Hellenic College. Archbishop Alpidophoros and the Reverend Hierarchs, President Cantonis, Vice President for Academic Affairs, Dr. Dimitrulius, Vice President for Administrative Affairs, Deacon Alexander, Reverend Dean of Holy Cross, Father George, Honorary Doctors and the Faculties of Hellenic College and of Holy Cross, as well as parents, grandparents, family, and continuing students, and above all, graduating students. I greet you on this happy occasion of the Hellenic College 2023 commencement with the joyous words, Christ is risen. Christ is risen. Hellenic, 
Graduates, today you join a numerically small but spiritually mighty cohort. Since its establishment in 1968, only 928 individuals have ever earned the title of Hellenic College graduate. There is a story in the Desert Fathers about an abbot who told a monk to take a dry stick and water it daily. The well from which the monk would get the water was far away, and yet he watered the stick with diligence and obedience. After a few years, the abbot came back to check on the stick and saw that it had burst into bloom and produced three apples. He took these apples and shared them with the other monks, saying, taste the fruit of obedience. Today, these Hellenic College graduates are tasting the sweet fruit of diligence and obedience. Even though so many students were forced to pause their education because of COVID, they persisted. Even though they had to put up with distance education, living at home for a year, and the various challenges of technology, they doggedly and dutifully returned to their studies. We all know that an easier life is not usually a happier life, and that a comfortable life lived in an excess of ease and indulgence leads not to joy, but to physical sickness and emotional weakness. So I wish you, my 2023 graduates, that as you go forward, you choose adventure over comfort, sacrifice over selfishness, challenges a little too big rather than a self-conception way oversized. Finally, I leave you with these two words, humility and honor. Humility for as you go out into the world, remember that no job is beneath you and no job is too small to not do well and with love. Honor for remember too that no job is too big if God is calling you to it and no job is too much for you if you undertake it in a spirit of service. So cleanse your heart and then follow your heart, trusting that if you do, God and other people will help you. It is now my privilege to present the valedictorian of the Hellenic College class of 2023, if you can proceed. Mrs. Olivia Victoria Failing. Olivia, congratulations on all your hard work, and please. Your Eminence, Assembled Hierarchs, President Cantonis, and members of the Board of Trustees, honored guests, faculty, staff, and students of Hellenic College, and family and friends, Christ is risen. We're gathered together today on graduation day once again as a family in Christ. How many people can really say that their college experience was like being surrounded by family? We lived together, studied together, ate together, and prayed together. We rejoiced in each other's joys and mourned each other's losses. We lived each day united in Christ, with him at the center of all our undertakings, academic or otherwise. This famil familial community is the hallmark of Hellenic College that sets it apart from other institutions and was the aspect that I valued most from the moment I arrived here. I started my college career at a big school in Pennsylvania and I thought it had everything I wanted. When I got there though, I didn't feel at peace. Even though I was surrounded by tens of thousands of other students, I felt isolated and alone. Four of my best friends whom I met at Project Mexico enrolled in a semester of faith at Hellenic College, and I decided to join them in order to buy myself some time and to discern where my college career would take me next. I never expected to stay at Hellenic College. However, after just a few days on this campus, I felt at home. I had peace for the first time in months, and it was, just, and it was as if the decision to stay here and study was made for me. What is it about our school that fosters the sense of unity, closeness, and community? There are so many aspects, probably too many to cover in this short time, but I'd like to highlight a few. To begin, the professors of Hellenic College not only challenge us academically, but form us spiritually and orient us towards Christ. They themselves are examples of compassion and the true faith. They are engaged with the student body and always prepared to teach by example. They are truly a cornerstone of our community. We also have the chapel at the heart of our campus. 
Going forward, most of us will never have the same opportunity to be so deeply rooted in the liturgical life of the church. When a community of people come together twice a day, every day to pray, such as the opportunity we've been given to do, we can't help but grow in love for each other. Thirdly, the student body is unique, vibrant, and one of a kind. The friendships we've formed are rooted in Christ and they go beyond the surface, and I know they will last a lifetime. My fellow graduates, we are truly blessed. We have been able to live the beautiful life that the prophet David references in the Psalms when he says, what is so good or so joyous as for brothers to dwell in unity? My fellow graduates, it has been so good and so joyous. Although I could happily stay here at this school, plugged into this community for a while longer, it's time to take the next step. College is not meant to last forever. We come, we receive our education, and we go. However, we have received so much more than just an education. We have received the gift of a family, and today we're called to go out and share it with the rest of the world. We are leaving Hellenic College, but let us honor our beloved school by bringing honor to her name through our actions of love to all those we encounter. We've been given the gift of community here. May we go forth with brotherly love into every community we enter and share the joy that we've experienced here. In this way, we can contribute towards the future of our school by being examples of its hospitality. Let's ensure that this is the mark of Hellenic College alumni, and in this way, they will know that we are Christ's disciples. Congratulations, Hellenic College Class of 2023. It is now my pleasure to introduce Father George Parsenios, Dean of the Holy Cross School of Theology. Father George. Your Eminence Archbishop Elpido Foros, Reverend Hierarchs, fellow clergy, distinguished guests, faculty of Hellenic College and Holy Cross, graduates in your families, Christos Anesti. I would like to offer a few remarks to the graduates by reflecting for a moment on what it means to live in a golden age. And by golden age, I mean those times in history when we look down over the past and for the most part, we see very flat terrain where people live their lives, they get up every day and they go to work they raise their families and they do lots of normal things, but not a lot of extraordinary things. But sometimes as we look down that terrain, it's not flat at all. We see peaks and mountains telling us that in those days, people did extraordinary things. Since we are here at an institution of the Greek Orthodox Archdiocese of America, I would like to reflect on three golden ages in history, one Greek, one Orthodox, and one American. The Greek one is easy, because let's be honest, every age is a golden age for Greece, right? <laughs> but I think especially of the golden age of classical Athens in the fifth century, when we see the monuments of the Parthenon constructed, when a fledgling democracy sets the pattern for the world to follow for democratic rule. And just to mention the names of the people in this age is to show that it was golden. We have the comics, I'm sorry, the, the poets, Aeschylus, Sophocles, Euripides, and Aristophanes. In politics, we have the leaders, Themistocles, Miltiades, and Pericles. The philosophers, Socrates, Plato, and a little bit later, Aristotle. And the great historian, Thucydides, who told us what life was like. This was clearly a golden age. The Orthodox golden age is the fourth century AD when Constantine the Great leads the once persecuting Roman Empire toward being a Christian Roman Empire. And the monuments are churches all over the world from Jerusalem to Rome built by Saints Constantine and Helen whose memory we commemorate tomorrow. Another great monument, of course, from the fourth century is the Nicene Creed that we recite every Sunday. And again, just to say the names of the people 
is to show that it was a golden age. St. Anthony the Great and Pacomius are founding monasticism. St. Athanasius the Great, St. John Chrysostom, St. Basil the Great, St. Gregory the Theologian, St. Gregory of Nyssa. Again, this was clearly a golden age. And third, the American golden age is one that's close to us at home here because much of it was lived in Boston. It's the golden age of the glorious revolution in the late 1700s when the great monument that was given to the world was the Declaration of Independence, the Constitution of the United States. And again, just to say the names is enough. Samuel Adams, John Adams, Thomas Jefferson, Alexander Hamilton, James Madison, and of course, George Washington. This too was a golden age. But if these three ages were golden, they were not perfect. It was the Athenians, after all, who killed Socrates. And it was the Byzantine church that sent St. John Chrysostom into excruciating exile and certain death. And it was the founders of this nation who spoke so eloquently about the freedom and liberty that was due to all men, even as they continued to enslave some. They were not perfect. And when you go out, graduates, into the golden ministry of serving, however you do, as clergy or laity, serving the church of Jesus Christ, you will not find circumstances that are perfect. Your ministry will be golden, but it will not be perfect. And that's what you should expect. I heard a story once where someone asked seminarians, what kind of church do you want to serve someday? And of course, they all said, I want a perfect youth ministry. I want a perfect choir. I want adults who are well-educated. And the response was, those people don't need a priest, right? <laughs> you need to go into circumstances that are not perfect in order to make them just a little bit more golden. And these distractions and these problems are not deviations from your ministry. They're not things pulling you away from your ministry. They are your ministry. That's what your ministry is. Similarly, if these golden ages were not perfect, they are golden. But they were not found golden. They were made golden by struggle, by effort. The Athenian golden age started with two terrifying invasions by the mighty Persian Empire. And the wonderful Athenian democracy was always under siege from oligarchs and aristocrats who wanted to retake their power and who succeeded near the end of the century. The Orthodox Golden Age was similarly besieged. There's a wonderful book by Robert Wilkin called John Chrysostom and the Jews in which he talks about the circumstances in which Chrysostom began his ministry in Antioch. And he recognizes that the Christians were going more to the synagogues on Saturday than to the church on Sunday. And they were going more to the theaters and to the circus more than anything else. And of course, heresy was rampant. As Jerome said, I woke up one day and the whole church was Arian. This was a difficult time to conduct ministry. And finally, of course, in our golden age here in America, he didn't actually say it, but it's a very expressive statement. Benjamin Franklin is said to have exclaimed after the signing of the Declaration of Independence, now we had better all hang together or we will all hang separately because they were opposing the mighty British Empire. So the golden ages are not given, they are earned, they are struggled for. You have to go in order, in, out in order to engage in struggle. Jesus didn't tell you, those who wish to follow me live a life of ease and luxury. He said, those who wish to follow me take up your cross. And I wish I could give you the 10 habits of highly effective priests and ministers. I, I can't do that. But I will quote something I saw in a wonderful document circulated by the Sindismos of the metropolis of Detroit, in which Father Mark Sitsima said, so many of us want to make 
the Orthodox Church one of the leading religions in America, and that's a lofty, worthy goal. But it seems to me more primary to make Orthodoxy the number one faith in the hearts of its believers. Try to do that. And you can do that if you first make Orthodoxy the number one faith in your own hearts. Set aside your egotism. Set aside your misconceptions about what your ministry might be. And keep your eyes always on the symbol that we hold in front of ourselves here, the cross. Because our Lord told us when we carry that cross, if we die a death like that of the Lord, we will surely rise to a resurrection of the Lord. God be with you all. You have our prayers. Amen. Uh, thank you. Your Eminence, please, would you come to the... Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. This is very important. That's okay. I probably missed my mark. We have had a wonderful group of seminarians graduate last year, this year, and next year. People who are good at so many aspects of what they're trained to do. And so it's no small feat that this year our valedictorian is Alexandros Pandazis. Alexandros, please make your way to the stage. Your Eminence, Archbishop El Pivofore, Venerable Hierarchs, President Cantonis, esteemed deans, distinguished guests, family and friends, and of course, my fellow classmates. Christos Anesti. Whenever you win an award or accomplish something like this, there's always the temptation to be overly proud of yourself. To say, this is something that I accomplished. This is mine. But the truth is something a certain Yerondisa reminded me of recently. Whenever we achieve something, whenever we accomplish something, the effort is ours. But the result is the Lord's. This is abundantly true not only for myself, but for all of us graduating. Each of us is here because of our own efforts, small or great. But we are also here graduating because of the efforts of so many others, because of our teachers and mentors, our hierarchs and spiritual fathers, the professors and staff of this sacred school. Our own efforts would be nothing if they weren't supported by one another's efforts by our spouses, siblings, and children, and if they weren't initiated by the efforts of our parents, godparents, and grandparents. But these are only the efforts that led us here today that we can see. For we are surrounded by so great a cloud of heavenly witnesses that we can also say that we are here today thanks to the efforts of the holy and great fathers, patriarchs, prophets, Apostles, preachers, evangelists, martyrs, confessors, and ascetics who preserved and enlivened the Orthodox faith throughout the centuries and who continue to intercede for us to this day. In this manner, we can say that our achievement today is a gift. A gift that we can call the great paradosis, the great tradition of Orthodox Christianity. This great paradosis that we have received is a treasure. Living in it every, every day can make it seem like it isn't, but it is a treasure, the treasure of eternal life. And as Christians, we know that every treasure we receive is not meant to be kept, but to be shared, to be multiplied out of its abundance in honor of those who gave it to us. In many ways, Commencement Day is not unlike the day we read about in the Gospels of Matthew and Luke, when the Master entrusted his talents to his servants. 
That day was the commencement of a ministry for those servants, the ministry of putting the gift they received to its proper use. Of course, we all know that the servant who failed in this ministry was the one who buried his talent. And this is what I want to focus on for the next few minutes. In graduating from Holy Cross, and even simply being part of the Orthodox Church, we can be inclined to say that we truly have been given the treasure of treasures. In fact, many of us being Greek may be tempted to say that we have the richest and most ancient pieces of that treasure. Indeed, being under the homophorion of his All Holiness, the ecumenical patriarch, means that we have a special and central piece of that divine treasure. But how often do we, remain, do we remain stuck in how amazing it is to have that special treasure? How often do we get caught up in the value of the treasure itself that we forget the commandment to share our riches with those who lack them? How often do we treat that treasure as something that needs to be protected rather than something that needs to be multiplied? The rich language of the scriptures show us that the treasure we have received over the past few years at Holy Cross is not just a treasure. It is also a pearl, a fishing net, a seed, a seed that when planted in the ground grows into a massive and life-giving tree. What I want to point out today is that planting something and burying something do not look all that different. Think about it. When you look at someone planting something and you look at someone burying something, the steps they take are practically identical. The only difference is their fruits. In our ministry in the United States, I think we often fall victim to the deception that we are planting the great treasure of the Orthodox faith. When in reality, we are burying it. No doubt, my fellow beloved classmates, this is a temptation we will face as we leave our sacred school. The temptation to bury everything we have received here. We will be tempted to bury the treasure of knowledge we have been taught within our own minds and our bookshelves. We'll be tempted to bury the rich liturgical life we have learned to live in foreign languages and in our bashful acceptance of a surface level prayer life. We'll be tempted to bury the love we have received from one another in the silos of our homogenous parishes and to bury our desire to grow the church in our separated jurisdictions. We'll be tempted to bury the truth of the resurrection in our fear of sticking out, of being different, of standing up against the powers and spirits of this fallen world. But certainly, this is not what our great Paradosis calls us to do. In his own farewell address in the Gospel of John, the Lord tells his disciples, as the Father sent me, even so I send you. So often while we were students at Holy Cross, we were warned, we were warned not to have a Messiah complex, not to think that we are here to save the world, but as we stand at the commencement of our new lives in ministry, of being sent into the world as Christ was, I think we also need to remember that we are being sent out to continue the work of the word of God, Jesus Christ. We are being sent out to fulfill the divine economy of the Messiah who came into the world not to condemn, but to save it. And to do so with blood and suffering. This is the mission of the church, the body of Christ. And this is the task that all of us who are graduating from Holy Cross are setting out to embark on. Each of us does not need to travel into every corner of the earth to fulfill that task. We will each be given our own place and our own people in which we can plant the seed that we have been given. But let us go out to those places with one mind and one heart. Let us go out together with the Messiah's own complex. Let us go out together knowing that we are the body of Christ. 
Let us go out together believing that every effort we make to share the divine gift that God has given us will be energized and fulfilled by the Holy Spirit. Let us plant the life-giving talents we have been gifted over the past few years. Let us not bury them so that the whole of America, that the whole world may blossom with the fruits of eternal life. Christ is risen. Uh, Your Eminence, would you please come to center stage? Uh, Father Michael Gurumetris, would you please escort Connie and Charles Contras to center stage? Dr. Petitsis, would you proceed with the reading of the citation? Charles and Constance Cotras, citation for the honorary degree Doctor of Humanities. Grand benefactors of this institution over many years through Leadership 100, the Foundation for Hellenic College Holy Cross, the Nicholas C. Triandafilu Endowment, and countless instances of direct philanthropy, you have manifested an unwavering devotion to our mission, equaled only by your unwavering devotion to each other. Your support of Hellenic College Holy Cross and of the Church in America as a whole is unsurpassed and deserving of our deepest gratitude. You embody the highest virtues espoused by our faith, our Hellenic heritage, and the society in which we live. Thus, Charles and Constance Kotros, we are most thankful to you for giving us the singular privilege and great joy of bestowing upon you our sacred institution's highest honor, the degree of Doctor of Humanities Demis Enneken. May, may your selfless love and dedication to Christ and his church serve as an example for all. Well done, good and faithful servants. By virtue of the authority vested in, in me by the corporation and its board of trustees of Helena College Holy Cross Greek Orthodox School of Theology, I do hereby confer upon Connie and Charles Contras, Doctor of Humanities. Christos Anesti. Connie and I accept this great honor with deep gratitude and humility. We thank your eminence, Archbishop Epipiathorlos, your eminent Metropolitan Methodius, President Cantonis, the Board of Trustees, and the faculty. We wish to acknowledge our core Honorary Professor, Dr. Louis Pasavos, as my, and my successor as Chairman of Leadership 100, Jim Log Logothetis. We feel blessed to receive this recognition as part of the baccalaureate and graduate school commencement ceremonies honoring the class of 2023. You are living proof of our reason for giving. It is essential that all faithful Greek Orthodox men and women support this extraordinary and unique institution, our only Greek Orthodox 
theological school here in America. Some 30 years ago, a group of men got together with Archbishop Jacobus. At that time, the Archdiocese was having a difficulty financially. And they came up with the idea of creating an organization that would support the ministries of the Archdiocese. And they came up with the name Leadership 100. The 100 was part of a, 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 a thought process where leadership would go out and get members that would commit to $100,000 over 10 years. The Archbishop, in his great humor, said, gentlemen, if you could find 100 Greeks that would give $100,000, I'm ready to go to heaven. <laughs> well, not only did we do that, we now have over 1,000 members. We have... We have, we have $100 million in the bank. We have a history of giving to support our pledge. Over the, up to last year, our total commitment and, and payment to the Archdiocese was over $70 million. Wow. Of that, of that 41% of that money went to this school. I can assure you that Leadership 100 will continue to support the school and the ministries of the Archdiocese. I too wish to thank the school for all they do for all these young students. And for, for me, the main thing in life is the Lord first, then your family. Congratulations to all of you. That's good. Your Eminence, again, if you could center stage, Father Michael, would you please escort um, our Professor Fatsavos to the center stage, and Father George Arsenios, please proceed to the podium. Dr. Louis J. Patsavos, citation for the honorary degree, Doctor of Divinity. Internationally renowned authority on canon law, Vice President of the Society for the Law of the Eastern Churches, eloquent writer and speaker, beloved teacher and mentor of generations of our students, you have made and continue to make an extraordinary impact on the intellectual and spiritual life of our church. You embody the highest virtues espoused by our faith, our Hellenic heritage, and the society in which we live. Thus, Dr. Patsavos, we are most thankful to you for giving us the singular privilege and great joy of bestowing upon you our sacred institution's highest honor, the degree of Doctor of Divinity, Timis Eneken. May your selfless love and dedication to Christ and his church serve as an example for all. Well done, good and faithful servant. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Corporation and its Board of Trustees of Helena College, Holy Cross, Greek Orthodox School of Theology, I do hereby confer upon Dr. Louis Batsavos the honorary degree of Doctor of Divinity.
your eminences, Archbishop Elpidophoros, Metropolitan Methodius of Boston, most reverend hierarchs, esteemed President Judge Cantonis, distinguished members of the dais, honored faculty and guests, and dear graduates, Christos Anesti. As a former professor of this beloved institution, used to speaking long and often, I promise not to test your patience today. <laughs> However, I feel compelled to express briefly the following sentiments. I take pride in the fact that I share this event with an exceptional, indeed, a remarkable couple, Mr. and Mrs. Charles Cotras, well known as we have heard and read for their many good works to benefit both the church and the community at large. Having served as faculty representative to the Board of Trustees when Mr. Cotras was a member of that board, I witnessed firsthand his love for this institution. His words of support inevitably led to tangible acts towards its advancement. I offer Mr. and Mrs. Cotros, in behalf of us all, deep gratitude and heartfelt congratulations. Oxy. I am profoundly grateful to those responsible for the honor also conferred upon me and for the gracious initiative and rationale cited in presenting it. I know well that in this act and decision, there is hyperbole. I do not believe that I warrant this honor, nor do my convictions justify the expectation of this type of recognition. The reason for it is not due to me, but to the kindness and generosity of those who proposed and approved it. There are others who merit this distinction more than I. Nevertheless, in all humility, I accept this great honor, not for myself, but as one representing the faculty of my generation with whom I had the privilege to serve for four decades at Holy Cross School of Theology. If there is anything or anyone to honor, it is the memory of those who nurtured me in the faith by their example. My beloved parents of blessed memory, John and Rita, and my spiritual fam father from the days he was also my parish priest at the Annunciation Cathedral of Boston, our never to be forgotten Archbishop Biakovos of blessed memory. May their memory be eternal. To the graduates of both the college and the School of Theology, we salute you and congratulate you for your achievement as well as your parents for entrusting you to this institution and community. As you prepare to go into, the, into a world desperately in need of examples of integrity and leadership, allow me in closing to share two sayings which have been the cornerstones of my life. The first comes from the Gospel of St. John and remains embedded in the depths of my being. Without me, you can do nothing. Whatever of worth is achieved in the life of a Christian can be attributed only to our faith in Jesus Christ and in the belief that he alone is responsible for it. The second is an ancient Greek aphorism attributed to Socrates and although of pre-Christian origin reflects a fundamental Christian principle, know thyself. To know yourself is knowing who you are, not who the favorable opinions of others say you are. In today's world of instant gratification, the principles of attributing all to God and knowing our limitations pose a profound challenge. Whether we are called upon to serve our fellow human beings in the church or in the world, our motto must always be, less of me, Lord, and more of you. Flee the temptation of ambitious and vain pursuits. Trust in God. Seek the goal of service to others. If there is anything I have learned during the years of my long life, half of them spent on this holy hill, it is that these are the principles which lead to fulfillment. 
These are the principles reflected in the lives of many of the colleagues, administrators, and students with whom I have been privileged to share my career. I have tried to emulate their example. May similar examples of those you have come to admire and respect during your years at Hellenic College and Holy Cross inspire you to do likewise. Thank you. Dr. Tim. Candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Arts, please rise. <laughs> Mr. President, upon the recommendation of the faculty of the Undergraduate College and the Board of Trustees, I am pleased to present the candidates who have fulfilled all requirements for the degree of Bachelor of Arts. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of Hellenic College, Holy Cross, Greek Orthodox School of Theology, I do hereby confer upon you all the degree of Bachelor of Arts according to the requirements set forth by the college in which you have qualified with all honors, privileges, responsibilities thereunto pertaining. Candidates, please proceed. Demetrius Thales Doges. Andres Luis Duran. Olivia Vasiliki Failing. Alexander William Malian. <laughs> Eli A. Piper. <laughs> Christopher Russell. Catherine Smith. And in absentia, Zidia Pan. Candidates for the Certificate in Byzantine Music, please rise. Mr. President, upon the recommendation of the Faculty of the Graduate School of Theology and the Board of Trustees, I am pleased to present the candidates who have fulfilled all requirements for the Certificate in Byzantine Music. Already vested in me by the Board of Trustees of Hellenic College Holy Cross, Greek Orthodox School of Theology, I do hereby confer upon the certificate in Byzantine music according to the requirements set forth by the Graduate School of Theology in which you have qualified with all honors, privileges, and responsibilities thereunto pertaining. Ioannis L. Flanders. Constantina Marinakos in absentia. Eli Elias Pagonis. <laughs> Ch 
Chrysanthi Dimitra Therianos in absentia. <laughs> Catherine Joanna Zyderveen. Certificate in Youth and Young Adult Ministry, please rise. <laughs> Mr. President, upon the recommendation of the faculty of the Graduate School of Theology and the Board of Trustees, I am pleased to present the candidate who has fulfilled all the requirements for the certificate in Youth and Young Adult Leadership and Ministry. Already vested in me by the Board of Trustees of Helena College, Holy Cross, Greek Orthodox School of Theology, I do confer upon the Certificate in Youth and Young Adult Ministry according to the requirements set forth by the Graduate School of Theology in which you have qualified with all the honors, privileges, responsibilities thereunto pertaining. Lydia Bennett Lukumidis. Candidates for the advanced degree of Master of Theology, please rise. Mr. President, upon the recommendation of the faculty of the Graduate School of Theology and the Board of Trustees, I am pleased to present the candidates who have fulfilled all the requirements for the degree of Master of Theology. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of Helena College, Holy Cross, Greek Orthodox School of Theology, I do hereby confer upon you the degree of Masters of Theological Studies according to the requirements set forth by the Graduate School of Theology, in which you have qualified with all the honors, privileges, and responsibilities thereunto pertaining. Stoyanche Andov. Gabrielle Florine Kupsa. <laughs> Nicolos Gurgunidze in absentia. <laughs> Reverend Deacon Jeremiah Mandoras. Reverend Father M. Christian Moody. <laughs> Reverend Father Nikolai Alexandru Pretorian. Reverend Father Cosmin Gavril Sikoi. <laughs> Reverend Father Joby Kurien Thomas. Reverend Father Vasily Catalin Tudora. <laughs> and Reverend Deacon Vasily Yakalis in absentia.
Candidates for the advanced degree of Master of Theological Studies, please rise. Mr. President, upon the recommendation of the faculty of the Graduate School of Theology and the Board of Trustees, I am pleased to present the candidates who have fulfilled all the requirements for the degree of Master of Theological Studies. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of Helena College, Holy Cross, Greek Orthodox School of Theology, I do hereby confer upon you the degree of Master's the Study of Theology according to the requirements set forth by the Graduate School of Theology in which you have qualified with all honors, privileges, responsibilities hereunto pertaining. Christina D. Anastasiades in absentia. John Paul Dalber in absentia. Theophany Sarigyanis in absentia. Nicholas Makarios. Elias Gerge Musa. <laughs> Candidates for the advanced degree of Master of Divinity, please rise. Mr. President, upon the recommendation of the faculty of the Graduate School of Theology and the Board of Trustees, I am pleased to present the candidates who have fulfilled all the requirements for the degree of Master of Divinity. In me, by the Board of Trustees of Hellenic College, Holy Cross, Greek Orthodox School of Theology, I do hereby confer upon you the degree of Master of Divinity according to the requirements set forth by the Graduate School of Theology in which you have qualified with all of the honors, privileges, and responsibilities thereunto pertaining. Candidates, please proceed. John Lewis Anton. Emmanuel Aspiotis. <laughs> Savas Bornelis. Ronald Clark the third. <laughs> Stavronikitas Damianakis. Ioan Georgiou. <laughs> Z.
Zachary J. Heller. Kamel Nabil Hurani. <laughs> Stephen Kalina. Napoleon Canari. <laughs> Caroline Jane Malikas. Elias Pagones. <laughs> Alexandros Evangelos Pandazis. Pasquale Constantine Santarelli. <laughs> Marcelo John Souza. Sterner. I would not, will now like to invite His Eminence uh, to the podium to the give, give um, his benediction and pastoral speech. Your Eminence. Please stay, please be seated. President Candonis, your eminences and graces, members of the Board of Trustees, faculty and administration, clergy and laity, and of course, graduates of 2023, your families and friends, sisters and brothers in the risen Lord, Christos Anesti. What a moment for all of you to have come this far on your journey, the journey of knowledge and faith. This commencement 
is much more than a reward for your past accomplishments. It is, in fact, a launch pad for the rest of your lives. Their trajectory is not yet fully revealed, but you can take comfort that our merciful God holds the course of your lives in his loving hands. He knows your beginning and he knows your ending. This will always be of great comfort to you if you hold to it. Everything that you have learned and experienced here at our precious Scholi is like a fuel for your lives. The glories of our Orthodox faith and of our culture are filled with the energy of God. They will propel you to amazing heights, heights that are unimaginable to you yet as you sit here today for your graduation exercises. But allow me to counsel you as this is my paternal exhortation to you as your archbishop. What you have learned here at Holy Cross is not the final infusion of this energy into your minds and your souls. It is only the beginning. The training that you have received here on this Hill of Hope is designed to prepare you to absorb so much more. The tradition of our church, liturgical, aesthetic, patristic, theological, homiletic, or hagiographic. This is a vast ocean of grace and wisdom. You cannot possibly imbibe all the church's treasures in one lifetime, no matter how long you live and how much you study. Like the medieval story of the little child that the blessed Augustine met on the seashore of Africa. The story goes that while Augustine was struggling in his book De Trinitate for the Holy Trinity, he took a walk by the seaside meditating on the mystery of the Holy Trinity. Suddenly, he came upon a little child who had dug a small hole in the sand and with a seashell was scooping water from the sea into the hole. Augustine watched him for a while and finally asked him what he was doing. The child answered that he was taking all the water from the sea and pouring it into the little hole in the sand. What, said Augustine, like we all would, would do, that is impossible. The sea is too large and the hole too small. Indeed, said the child, but I will sooner draw all the water from the sea and empty it into this hole than you will succeed in penetrating the mystery of the Holy Trinity with your limited little mind, said the child. <laughs> <laughs> so Augustine turned away in amazement and when he looked back, the child was gone. It is a wonderful tale, and the point is well taken. We cannot understand everything. We shall never be omniscient as God is. However, with the discipline you have received here at the Hellenic College Holy Cross, you have the ability to access the magnificent sources of our Orthodox Church. You have the streams of faith, of wisdom, and knowledge with which to water your minds and your hearts. Thus, my dear children, I exhort you paternally, do not think of this graduation as a final step. It is only the first. Use what you have learned and learn more. Always make time for spiritual reading and for study. We know about anagnosma from our corporate worship and reading of scripture, but there is also the diavasma 
the close attention and meditation upon the words of the Lord, the words of the saints, of the fathers of our church, of the ascetics. Continue to refuel yourselves at every instance, in season and out of season. Make of your educational success here at Hellenic College and Holy Cross the foundation for the rest of your lives and build a spiritual library for your souls upon the traditions you have received here from your teachers, from your spiritual fathers, from the staff, the administration, and from one another. You will find refreshment as from living waters from applying yourselves in this way. It will be as the prophet Solomon says, the fountain of wisdom is a rushing stream. Therefore, my beloved graduates, let this day of your commencement be a day of foundation. Let it be a groundswell of the wellspring of your spiritual energy, grace for your lifetime and indeed for eternity. For with our God is our fountain of life and his light shall we see light. May the Lord always be with you, bless you, your families and the stream of your individual lives this day and always and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Axi. Uh, really, no one has ever stood up for me before, so please don't start now. Oh. Could we hold that, please? Thank you. Uh, I've been embarrassingly. Co please sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. My uh, my my children, my two sons, who are 42 and 44, find it hysterical when people refer to me as either Dr. Cantonis, President Cantonis, or Father Cantonis. And, and um, you know, the, the, I've enjoyed my time here, but not to that degree, okay. Just, uh, in closing, uh, I, I think that there's some thanks that really need to be passed on and some, gradua and some congratulations. Uh, you all, graduating class, have been with me the longest, okay? And uh, yes, well, you have too, but... Uh, uh, Right. Uh, congratulations on your accomplishments, uh, on the successful completion of this step in your life process. It's a step in your life process. To the parents, congratulations on the nurturing, on your parenting, and on the support, both financial, personal, and spiritual, that you've successfully invested with love to your young graduates. To the faculty, Bless you for the life of commitment, both professionally and personally, that you have made to advance our students, both intellectually and spiritually. Administration and staff, you all keep the institution functioning with kindness and consideration and focus on mission. Thank you, friends and family, of course, for having joined us in the celebration. To the board, I extend thanks for the commitment to our faith and to our school because without an engaged board, this school would not exist. Without uh, the donors present to here as examples, this school would not exist. To our honorees, it is our enormous honor to cite you for the enormous contributions that you have made to both faith in the school and your eminence. Our partnership has been both a blessing to me And finally, to you all personally, I want to thank you all for the opportunity to have been able to serve you for the last three and a half years. It's been my honor. It's been a blessing to me. And I thank you all from the bottom of my heart for that opportunity. Thank you all very, very much.
God bless you all. And if one thing can be remembered is the fact that we got out of here in an hour and a half, okay? <laughs> so thank you very much for joining us. Thank you very much. Congratulations again. And have all had a blessed afternoon. Good afternoon.